today we have to talk about Michael Jackson. Uh, I feel like um, I have to. Um, and you might think that this, uh, this topic is unrelated to my channel, which is about holistic healing and uh, mental health and uh, healing the planet. Um, but I think it's very much related and um, uh, I will tell you why, so stay tuned. Okay, so first of all, of course, nobody, nobody other than Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson and these boys uh, will know 100% what went on. Um, but what I'm gonna share in this video is only my reflections after watching the documentary and uh, the connections that I see to narcissism and narcissistic abuse. So, narcissistic abuse is something that is very closely connected to mental health issues and um, the sad thing is usually that um, narcissists are deeply uh, damaged people um, but that usually never seeks help for their problems uh, because they don't think that they have a problem but people that are around this, them and get affected by them usually get big problems with their mental health um, and uh, I also have another video about um, spiritual narcissism. Um, so, um, the signs of narcissism that I saw in this video um, is um, the most the most obvious one is uh, in narcissism. There is always like um, a love bombing phase, and then there is the discard phase. So in the love bomb bombing phase, um, the victim feels uh, really um, special and really chosen and like this person that they are meeting uh, is like you know the best person in the world and their lives just got so much better and you know and if it's true what these boys are saying then it's almost like he started like a narcissistic uh, relationship like a romantic relationship with these boys, which is just... It's so twisted that you can't almost comprehend it. And then after the love bombing, of course, it's the discard phase, where all of a sudden from this person being like... Um, yeah, um, chosen one, the special one, then all of a sudden they find a new person that they want to spend their time with and... Yeah, and so the first one feels left out and um, yeah, and because these relationships are, they get so close and everyone else gets shut, shut out, then um, it's like um, when the relationship finishes, it's like something's lacking, something's missing within the person. Like something that they can never get back. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's one of the signs of this. And then um, the other uh, sign of narcissism is that these people usually have a public persona that they portray as a really loving person, really caring person. And in celebrities, usually this comes off as them, them being really, you know, into um, humanitarian things and wanting to s help people, save people, and I found find this part almost the most disturbing. That again, if this is true, that he was actually taking like sick kids and um, you know kids from poor countries and so on to the Netherlands ranch as a way to help them like he was like this multi-billionaire and then the kids were supposed to you know have a happy time just by meeting him and being in his presence i don't know that alone to me seems a little bit narcissistic um but 
we have to also be reminded when we watch this, like in retrospect, that the culture back then was entirely different and celebrities were really seen as gods and, you know, these intouchable people that were above everyone else. And it's, uh, I think we, we look at these things a little bit differently today, but anyways, and it's, it's interesting that as well that in, in interviews that he actually seemed to look at himself as some type of messiah and that he looked up to Jesus as a person and he even had a painting of himself as Jesus in his uh, mansion and um, yeah I'll just leave it at that yeah another thing that is kind of a, like a red flag to me is that his soft voice and his um, you know innocent appearance um, almost like this too good to be true aura about him and when something is too good to be true, it usually is. This is usually the thing that fans seem to bring up as well, like as a, to defend him, that oh, he, but he was so innocent and a pure soul. And um, the most difficult thing to digest when you've been exposed to narcissistic abuse is usually that you're so in love with this side of the person that is, that is loving, that is humble, that is caring that it's so difficult when you see the other side almost like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing and it really messes with your head because you're thinking am I the crazy one did this person really do this to me or so you can really lose touch with reality yeah so that's another red flag I see and also, another thing is um, making the abnormal seem normal. Like, narcissists are experts at this kind of thing. Uh, it's almost like the boundaries are pushed forward all the time. Like, your boundaries. Like, at first, maybe this was okay for you to do. And then it kind of stretches a little bit and a little bit more, a little bit more. Usually because, as I said before, you're so in love with this other side and the advantages you get by hanging out with this person so you kind of look the other way when these bad things happen and they, beget, they become more and more uh, obvious and yet yeah it creates this kind of glitch in your reality where in the end you have to make a decision like because it's a difficult thing realizing you have been you know, not only maybe lying to other people about what's going on, but lying to yourself and betraying yourself. <sighs> and with children, I mean, it's... I cannot imagine like the psychological damage of meeting a person that you have been admiring for so long and then at first they seem to be this amazing fairy ta fairy tale like person and that just lives in uh, like a disney castle almost where it, you have unlimited candy and you know um these uh, carousel rides and animals and everything a kid likes but then when the facade starts to break and you see the other side to it and you're a child, so I mean, who would be ready for that type of thing? Because it's not only your idol and, and your new best friend, but it's, you know, the idol of the entire world. Like, that's a tough pill to swallow. And that, as a small child, will see so many secrets that a person like this has. Like, who's gonna believe them, right? And yeah and remember again i'm speaking now as a, as if all this were true we can't know that again but it just seems very twisted to me the entire the entire uh, entire thing another typical sign of a narcissist is that they are they do not like to play by the normal rules so they kind of um yeah create create these bubbles uh, of uh, situations and places and people where they are allowed to do whatever they want 
and get away with things and if you are one of the richest people in the world and one of the most influential people in the entertainment industry I can just imagine what a pe person like that can get away with I mean I'm, I'm also thinking while watching this like what if uh, Michael uh, would have looked like Harvey Weinstein or you know like this stereotypical image of a perpetrator because I mean he, he looks really kind of he has this unique look about him like in his early years at least that is kind of, um, how can I put it, it's um, just uh, fascinating in a way, like you're just blinded by his uh, appearance uh, because he, 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 looks, he looks like something you've never seen before and he, he has such a unique look about him that you're just, yeah, intrigued. And I mean, judging from like the things you see, um, you see from Neverland from the inside, it's like this perfect bubble where a person could do whatever whatever they want. And of course, he's a he's a celebrity, so maybe he needed that space to you know be able to be himself for a while. Who knows? But still, it seems a little bit weird to me. And another thing is like about. Uh, narcissism like usually like distorted sexuality seems to be a major part of this uh, like yeah talking about sexuality in a weird way and you know not having normal boundaries around it things like that seem to be really really common and you know just looking at like you know celebrities and pop stars they usually have really sexualized content and lyrics and songs but if you put that in in, in correlation to like there were almost always kids in his videos and on his shows and things like that and the way he danced I mean was it appropriate for kids I don't know right and then yeah like covers like this And yeah, just really like sexualized kind of content and it would have been okay if there would be like, you know, mature people idolizing him and but mm, it really wasn't a lot of the times. So that's a little bit weird to me as well. Um, and other weird things in this uh, story is that, you know, um, he had songs like Thriller, like here's the album, Thriller, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so songs like thr uh, Thriller and Bad and Smooth Criminal, like those were some of his major songs, I mean, they're good songs, good pop songs, right, but if you compare this to the R. Kelly story, um, it's almost like if this is true, it's almost like they give themselves away in the lyrics, like smooth criminal. I mean, could it be any more obvious than that? And all the pictures of these little boys wearing like the thriller t-shirt and then Michael Jackson standing in the background with a hand on their shoulder or always touching them in some way. Like why would a grown man want to be in pictures with kids all the time like that? Touching them and... I feel like if, if this is all true, like then he would have two ways of trying to, you know, get away with this and it would be the one way would be to try and hide it completely, which obviously was not the way he, cho he chose. The other uh, road would be to be really obvious about it and claim that, yeah, but I just like kids, I like to hang around kids and I just want to, you know, uh, give them a better life. And yeah, somehow it feels like an even tougher pill to swallow if it's all true that he was actually doing this very, very openly, you know, hiding in plain sight kind of thing. So if that's true, then it really is like a thriller because you hear all these stories about like a young kid who had cancer and Michael came to save him and spend time with him 
and uh, yeah, you know, different stories like that, like Sean Lennon, he had lost his father, right? And then Michael showed up as like a new father figure for him. And yeah, by the way, uh, Sean Lennon also made a music video about, yeah, kind of his, his experience with Jackson. I, I will post it below and you just watch it if you have the courage to and then <laughs> let me know what you think. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is just, it's just too weird. So it's, it's really difficult once you start to watch these things to kind of stop because it's just, it seems too weird to be true, too weird to be, I don't know, it's just weird basically. <laughs> Another thing that seems really weird to me is that to me, this guy seems, I mean, he seems so obviously gay. Like, look at this photo. Like, he really looks gay. I mean, he always wears this makeup, he wears even wears lipstick, and he talks like a woman, and he, I mean, you don't have to talk like a woman to be gay, obviously, but, I mean, I'm even thinking maybe he was even like transgender bef before it became like a, you know, a thing, and, then it's really more amazing to me, like today, people who are openly gay, I mean, he wasn't open about it, obviously, and we don't know if he was gay, but um, today, people who are gay receive so much hate. I mean, it seems like over in the States and, and, and things like that, so for him to kind of get away with that, if he, he was really gay, seems astonishing, like... Uh, yeah, people didn't even suspect that he was gay. And <laughs> to me, my gaydar kind of goes me, 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 me. But hey, who am I to judge, right? But for example, like if you think that no, he wasn't gay, right? He couldn't have been. Then I think it's weird that there are like hundreds of f photographs of him appearing with young boys. Um, looking at them lovingly, holding them, holding their hand, talking with them, and so on. But there are not a lot of pictures of him talking to women his age, uh, or you know, kissing women, or holding hands with women. Um, and you know, a pop star of his, uh, you know, power and influence and money. He could have any woman that he would have liked. He could basically have a har harem of women around him, right? And most pop stars did. They did have harems of women. And some things that went on with them weren't probably that nice either. But that's another story. Uh, I also wonder, like, oh, these things like, you know, sleepovers with little boys and, uh, you know, holding hands with little boys, things like that. Wouldn't, would he have got away with that if he would have looked like a normal man his age? Like Harvey Weinstein, for example, Weinstein? I don't think so, right? Or uh, if it would have been young girls, I think that would also have seemed weird. Or we have, I think, like the public would have been more worried somehow, because if it's a t taboo subject to talk about um, child molestation and child child abuse, you know, of little girls, then child abuse and sexual molestation of little boys is even more difficult to talk about in our culture because, yeah, because of a lot of reasons, right? Um, because the boys, they, they grow up to, you know, grown men and they don't want to, you know, appear gay or they don't want to seem gay or, you know, a common thing with, you know, sexual abuse victims is also that they have shame around it because maybe they liked some part of these acts or they, and then it makes them question things like, you know, did I make this happen? Was it my fault? And so on. So that's a very common thing about 
yeah, sexual abuse victims and so on, that they blame themselves. Uh, so there, there's just so many um, layers to this story. Um, hmm. Another thing that seems weird is like a little bit of what I talked about before is that like this innocent and sweet aura about him and being like a humanitarian or he was such a good person, he helped so many people. But then at the same time living in like a huge mansion, having a huge amount of staff working for him and um, I don't see anything humble about his lifestyle at all and having big statues of himself in this mansion. I mean, it could have been, you know, just a fun thing to do and um, I mean, he was a pop star after all, so it, of course who's gonna, you know, live out their ex eccentricities if, it, if not for them. But um, it comes to this limit where it's not fun anymore, it's just, it's almost a little bit offensive. At least if you're at the same time, time trying to portray yourself as like, yeah, this messiah figure trying to save everyone and so on. Um, and I think that's a really sad thing to this as well. If it's true that he did these things, then these types of people really make us um, lose hope that it's possible for a person to actually want to save the world and you know be true about that and mean it and not come with you know this uh, you know do it because f for your own personal gains and so on like I see that quite a lot with people who, who try to make a difference that are not rich that are not celebrities and so on but they try to to do a good good thing for for yeah you know maybe the environment or, or things like that but We've seen so many cases of people doing that and then having this other side to them where they really don't care. It was just all about their public persona and, you know. So yeah, if it's true, it's just so evil, evil and twisted that I almost can't wrap my head around it. And I think I will have to um, process this for a while because it also gives you like a glimpse of like Hollywood culture because there have been so many famous kids hanging around this estate, right? Like Macaulay Culkin and Aaron and Nick Carter and uh, Sean Lennon and uh, all these other celebrities were there, right? So you start to wonder like, okay, if this person was this crazy, you know, if this was true, then how crazy are all these other people? How crazy is the entertainment industry? How crazy is Hollywood? I mean, Hollywood has this reputation of holy weird, right? And there's all these rumors of this, you know, pedophile uh, circles and things like that. Um, that just seems, you know, super, super evil. And then, but I've I've had a hard hard time believing those rumors, and I haven't read read about them even because I don't want to read too much bad stuff because it kind of messes messes with your head. Um, and then this comes out, and I just had to watch it because yeah, I just had to. And then it's like cracking this facade of. I don't know, for someone not living in the States, um, all this celebrity culture and you know Hollywood and the movies and the music is in a way it's a bit magical and it's a bit um, you kind of want to keep your illusions about some things that some things are magical in real life as well and <sighs> bubbles burst sometimes and we have to deal with reality and reality can be tough um, that's another thing that kind of um, amazed me with this documentary is that 
like yeah what would you choose like the comfortable lie or the inconvenient truth usually people go for the like the comfortable lies for a long time because they kind of keep us in this um yeah well-known territory and it kind of makes us believe in ourselves and the world and society and things like that but some things happen and you know it can be hard sometimes to um yeah really get thrown into the harsh reality of things um and i really understand that if you have been a fan of this person for a long time then and maybe built your identity around him even. But that's another interesting thing, like this um, fan culture. I always had a hard time understanding that. Like, why do we make, just because some, somebody makes good music and is great at singing and dancing or things like that, or, or acting, why do they become like gods to us? Like, we worship them and Mm, it, it doesn't really seem healthy to me. Like I understand the part like going to the concert and then enjoying the music and yeah, letting the music move you and, and things like that, of course. But the person behind it, like why is it so interesting to us, really? I've never understood that part. Um, and, and, and the thing as well, like um, we all got caught up in this, you know, Backstreet Boys thing or, you know, the Spice Girls and even to the point of people being in love with these people they had never met and that doesn't seem very healthy to me either. Like it's, um, we don't know these people, like we really don't. and. It's also a way of giving away our power when we do that. Um, no matter if this person is guilty or not, like it's um, a singer, an artist, a really talented one. But that's it. And I think that's the only thing we can say for sure that about this uh, documentary that um, I think this fan culture thing has to become a little bit more down to earth. Um, I think that would be uh, great for humanity in, in general if we could do that. Because we are all great in our own different ways. It's not about just because somebody can sing or dance or act and write that they are special and they are even from another planet or... <laughs> um no like we have to we can't give our power away like that and that goes for you know the spiritual scene and youtube things like this as well like we can have teachers along our path we can have guides and uh, helpers things like that um but in the end like it's our own journey here on earth in life and that's the most important thing, staying true to ourselves and we all make mistakes um, but then we have to own up to them and try to repair them as we go on through life. So um, that's the only way of breaking these vicious cycles because that's another thing like it's pretty obvious that <coughs> Michael seemed to have a really tough childhood um, but that's not like an excuse for anyone to do these awful things because then you're just continuing that cycle and that's what we see often in you know all of us that are working through trauma you know we know that these behaviors spread like wildfire you know through families and through generations and so just because somebody was abused and you know, place the victim, they still have to own up to their, their actions, they still have to be responsible, take responsibility. 
because we can't really compare trauma like it's not a competition like who has the most trauma gets to get away with things no that's not how, not how it works mm-hmm. um and i'm also wondering watching this like did he ever like you know go to therapy or you know it seems like he didn't but because those were also t- you know different days and different structures in society at the time so it wasn't that common um, but yeah because you know to me if he didn't go to te- therapy or he didn't try to um, work through the events that happened to him uh, in a healthy way then how is he gonna be a healthy person I don't really see that happening, right? Uh, because it takes years of hard work and dedication and healing to get through on the other side and actually live, you know, a decent life after, you know, surviving trauma. So, <sighs> yeah. It was just, yeah. A very dark story, no matter if it's true or not. I think the story about uh, Michael Jackson was really, really dark, and um, but yeah, I think it's a lesson for us to learn in this, and it's that hurt people hurt people, and no matter how innocent somebody might look, and no matter what they went through. It's never an excuse for inappropriate behavior in any way. Um, And no fame and no fortune, no amount of money can ever make up for, yeah, for example, a ruined childhood. so it's, I think it's also a lesson but about what's important in life, um, in the long run. Um, and yeah, so I feel like the, the comment section of this video is probably gonna run wild and it's okay, it's fine, I'm not out here to, you know, I'm just trying to share my honest thoughts about it. It's uh, you have your own truth about this. Um, and uh, yeah. So, again, we don't know what happened, but it's still an interesting uh, topic to discuss. Um, so, uh, yeah, with that said. Uh, <laughs> And uh, it's raining outside and it all feels a little bit gloomy today, but uh, I still wish you guys a nice weekend and uh, take care of you, take care of yourself and uh, see you again soon. Ciao!